What's up everyone and welcome back to Nexus. These days, everybody loves superheroes. Whether it's DC or Marvel, we've all got our favorite and there's no shortage of them to go around. But every superhero needs a good villain. And while you might see plenty of news stories about wannabe real life heroes who go around in tights and capes like in Kick-Ass, there's a darker side to that coin in the form of the real world bad guys. Watch this video to find out the 10 real life supervillains who actually exist. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get new content similar to this every day. And for this video, let's see if we can hit the golden like button, which is a thousand likes, so make sure to drop a like down below. Number 10. Marvin Heemeyer was a guy who wanted to do everything possible to save his business, while the city council seemed like they were doing everything possible to destroy it. He was a passionate and loyal friend, but could very easily become your worst enemy. And that's just what happened to the mayor of a small town, Granby, Colorado, when Marv got so frustrated at the council that he decided to build himself a tank. It was nicknamed the Killdozer, and was an enormous bulldozer covered in steel and concrete with two gun points in it where he could fire assault rifles at passers-by. So he took his Killdozer and destroyed the city hall, a cement factory, and even the home of the former mayor. Heemeyer's creation eventually gave up the ghost in it when it got crushed underneath a steel building and inside he took his own life before he could be arrested. A pretty tragic story all around, just like that of so many comic book villains. As horrified townspeople run for their lives, Hemeyer wrecks buildings and vehicles one after another. Uh, yeah, it's all encased in metal and you can't see who's driving or anything. Pier 43, we've had automatic weapon fire coming from the bulldozer. Inside his cockpit, Two assault rifles, lots of ammo, and video monitors to help him see where he's going. Number 9. There are some people to whom thievery runs in their blood, and Canadian robber Gerald Blanchard is one of them. This is a guy who's been in the news with comparisons to James Bond villains and the smarts of people who carry out renowned heists like The Italian Job and Ocean's Eleven. In fact, he once stole a jewel called Sissy Star in 1998, which belonged to Empress Elizabeth of Austria about 200 years ago. It was a real Indiana Jones moment, because Blanchard made a switch and left a replica in place of the real pearl, and nobody even noticed for weeks. And yet, despite all the glamour in his life, the thing he gets arrested for most of all is shoplifting. And not even shoplifting anything that's cool, just game consoles most recently. Seems like this guy lives to steal and doesn't even care when he goes to prison. Maybe that's the most villainous thing about him. Number 8. Our next villain comes straight out of Grand Theft Auto 5. His name is Joshua Brady and was arrested and charged previously in his life with pretending to be a CIA officer and convincing people to rob banks for the agency, in the name of a very unusual strain of the national interest. Most recently, he was arrested for forging the signature of a federal judge so that he could get back cell phone service. But he has some intense problems with pretending to be people he isn't. Though he was never actually successful at robbing the banks, he was also arrested for impersonating a Homeland Security officer and trying to acquire a room in a hospital for a scam with details redacted by officials in charge of the case. He's also been diagnosed with multiple mental health problems. But there's always the possibility that he's just taking his trickery to the next level and is fooling everyone who comes to evaluate him. Number 7. Jack Adama always had delusions of grandeur, with a pretty big emphasis on delusions. His career in Bizarre Stories really starts 20 years ago when he tried to sue Steven Spielberg for stealing his life story with their movie The Peacemaker. And while that case was obviously thrown out for being completely bogus, his life only gets weirder. Up to the point where he claims he was with Western armies when they invaded Afghanistan in 2001 to try and eliminate the Taliban. It seems he was actually there in Kabul, but none of the soldiers knew who he was. But he spent most of his time hanging about in cocktail bars telling people he was part of an elite task force sent to kill bin Laden. Things take a dark turn when Afghan police raided his house and found eight prisoners there, who all said he had tortured them while he claimed he was doing it all with permission from the Afghan and US militaries. Number 6. Officially, psychopathy is a mental disorder characterized as completely lacking empathy for another human being. Meaning that a psychopath is someone who literally has no feelings whatsoever for anybody else. Scarily enough, this makes them ideal for certain kinds of professions, like being heartless bankers or mostly surprisingly surgeons whose lack of care for their patient lets them keep a clear head and get on with their job. Then there are the psychopaths like Richard Kuklinski, aka the Iceman, who worked as a hitman for all kinds of different mafias including the infamous five families who ruled New York City. 
He's basically if the Godfather's Luca Brasi existed in real life, and just as scary, claiming to have killed up to 200 people for the mob before his death in prison in 2006. He murdered by guns, he murdered by strangulation, he murdered by putting poison on victims' food. He did all of this at the same time while exhibiting a normal, placid family existence. His wife, his children uh, were uninvolved in his criminal activities. Yet, uh, we are faced with uh, evidence, convicting evidence of uh, numerous grisly murders. Number five. If you're in a dead-end job working as a sales and marketing executive, you could always take the way out that one Edward G. Lansdale did and become a government spy. He was one of America's best operatives when it came to weeding out communist locals in impoverished countries. And one of his famous schemes to clear areas of these guerrilla factions came in the form of pretending there was a vampire on the loose. They would spread rumors of this creature, a blood-sucking, dismembered monster known as Aswang, and would eventually kidnap and kill communist soldiers, puncture their necks, drain them of blood, and leave them on roadsides for their comrades to find. Terrorizing them by posing as a cryptid, it's pretty clever, but also pretty evil. Number 4. We're still in the Philippines, but this time it's their own government the people are being terrorized by, rather than the Americans. Their current president and former vice president is the man called Rodrigo Duterte, someone also known as the real-life Punisher. Because of his love of martial law and vigilante justice, in his time in office as the mayor of Davao City for 20 years, he changed the city from a criminal haven to a peaceful sanctuary, all through gross acts of violence. He's responsible for starting something called the Davao Death Squad, who were literally a group of vigilantes who hunted down and murdered criminals, and apparently killed 300 people. He even supports people taking the law into their own hands when it comes to killing drug dealers, who he hates most of all. He even famously said just last year, kill a drug dealer and I'll give you a medal. Alam ninyo, ako'y tao lamang. Kaya binabati ko pa rin. Merry Christmas. Kayo mga drugista, magdanakaw, mga korap, mga kriminal, at yung napapahirap sa Pilipino. Kaya kung ayaw ninyong minto at patuloy pa rin ang karasan, ito na ang huli ninyong Merry Christmas. Number 3 We go from a guy who loves to kill drug dealers to a drug dealer who loves to kill. This guy is Mexican drug lord Miguel Angel Trevino Morales, nicknamed Z40, and he's basically guilty of every crime under the sun. He was arrested four years ago and charged with dozens of crimes, and was even wanted in connection with as many as 260 murders, and led a gang called the Zetas, known as Mexico's most ruthless drug cartel. They often like to kill people and leave bodies on display to show their power, and Z40 himself was particularly sadistic. One anonymous commenter once said that if you get called into a meeting with him, you're not going to come out of that meeting, and his preferred ways to kill people involve beating them with a wooden plank or putting them in a stew where he put them into an enormous metal drum and burned them alive. Miguel Angel Trevino Morales. In Mexico, his name is synonymous with brutality. His face, the final image, dozens, perhaps hundreds of victims will have seen before he either carried out or ordered their slaughter. Number two. Probably the scariest weapons you hear about in the media right now are biological ones. And there's a scary amount of truth behind this fear. Just like when everyone was persistently frightened of nuclear annihilation in the 1980s. And we're still in the 1980s for this story about a man called Dr. Wouter Bassen. A man who created a scheme called Project Coast in South Africa while it was still in its apartheid era. The entire evil goal of Project Coast was the development of biological and chemical agents to neutralize enemies of the state, which mainly included the black population of South Africa. While Project Coast has now been shut down, most of what he worked on remains a secret. Though there are people who think he is responsible for the most recent outbreak of Ebola, and that part of Project Coast was weaponizing the virus. He used to rock up in South Africa having flown in intercontinental flights with a trousers pocket full of goodies in sealed vials that he claimed were new and wonderful organisms and could do the most wonderful things on Earth. Larry Ford had mutated cholera, typhoid, anthrax, botulism, bubonic plague, and had also come up with germs that he called kaffir killing germs. Kaffir, as you may know, in Afrikaans is the equivalent of the N-word. So these are germs that were specifically engineered to kill only black people. Number one. Have you ever heard of the phrase drinking the Kool-Aid? Well, it's pretty common, so you probably have, but maybe you shouldn't if you hear the dark story as to where it comes from. It dates back to 1978, an event known as the Jonestown Massacre. 
Jonestown was a settlement built in the remote jungles of Guyana, South America, by a guy called Jim Jones who created the People's Temple, a group of communist extremists. Multiple horror stories come out of this place from survivors who managed to escape, but on the fateful day of November 18, 1978, every single person in Jonestown, a total figure of 918, died in an event called Revolutionary Suicide by Jones himself on an audio tape. After they were tricked into drinking a large amount of Kool-Aid laced with Valium, chloral hydrate, cyanide, and Phenergan. Having this vision to change the world, but having this whole undercurrent of dysfunction that was underneath that vision. Some people see a great deal of God in my body. They see Christ in me, a hope of glory. He said, if you see me as your friend, I'll be your friend. As you see me as your father, I'll be your father. He said, if you see me as your God, I'll be your God. That was our list of the top 10 real life supervillains who actually exist. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss a video in the future. And hit the like button too so we can hit the golden like of a thousand. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.